Hey guys, it's Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. Welcome back to the channel. We're going to be unboxing some more shed stuff today. What you see in front of me on the table was dropped off to my shop from a subscriber. So this is unboxing of stuff that I have no idea what's in it other than what I can see on top. And it came from a subscriber by the name of David Tipton. Now, some of you may be aware of David. He runs a channel of his own where he specializes in radio, vintage valve radio restoration and alike and he's a master at what he does it's a great channel i'll put a link down underneath if you'd like to have a look at it david's called into my shop a couple of times over the years because we watch each other's channel we always leave comments and um he was very kind to drop this off for nothing he's cleaning out a house in melbourne he lives in brisbane but uh, i think this is his mother-in-law's house and the stuff was in the shed and he thought i know who wants that and look what i've got so we'll go through it. We'll work out what sort of value we've got here. He didn't want anything for it. So, you know, I had to pull the old ace out of my sleeve and I gave him a valve radio I had in my shed. So he might do that up at one stage. Let's have a look at what David's dropped off. Let's see if there's much value in it. And, you know, if it goes along with my other unboxings, it'll be quite surprising what we can get out of it. Now, as you can see, there's a bit of general woodwork stuff. There's quite a few hand saws. There's a box of files. There's an, an, probably an 80s or 90s era, I'd say 80s, Willow Esky, and that's got some stuff in it. There's a couple of kitchen tins, and there's even a light shade. So we'll go through it, um, and we'll hopefully find some treasures. There's going to be a fair bit of brass and copper. There's some plumbing fittings and whatnot in here, so we'll weigh up our, our scrap value as well. We'll do the traditional uh, notebook list at the end and just see what sort of tally we get. So... We'll probably start with these saws on top first and then we'll work through each box. I don't expect it's going to take too long, but, you know, we might find something pretty interesting and have a bit of a chat about it. So whilst you're up there and we've got a bit of a distance to have a look at these saws, we'll leave the camera where it is. They're old hand saws or panel saws. Uh, they are missing some of the brass screws. They vary in date, so I'd suggest probably around 1950s or so. Uh, that's a, a more of a, oh, the teeth are well and truly flattened out on that one. It's been used to cut something fairly abrasive. In fact, I don't think that would cut at all. But that's a coarser uh, saw uh, TPI, teeth per inch. So that's more of a, a ripping saw to cut with the grain. That's a much finer one. Again, the teeth don't feel very sharp. So that's more of a cross cut saw. This one's a, a little bit coarser again. And at least that feels a little bit sharper. Now, Unlike the saws you buy today, most of them are just a hard point, which you use them until they're blunt, then you throw them away. These ones were designed to resharpen, and there's no doubt that even though they're pretty pretty blunt here as they are, uh, a craftsman could certainly bring them back to life with a little triangle file and a saw set, because to have them sharp, you also need to bend every second tooth the opposite direction, so that the wood saw cuts a groove through the wood which is wider than what the blade is. So if you've ever used an old wood saw and it keeps jamming, there's a fair chance that the teeth probably are blunt as well, but they also need setting. But we're not going to do that with these ones. The, the handles are pretty rough. Um, I think they're all missing some screws. No, that one's not. But they're look, they're really only decorative items. Oh, well, that's all I'm going to sell them for. We might try $10 each through the shop. People do like to use them um, and paint folk art pictures on them. So $10 might be a bit much. We'll start with that, but I'm going to value them at $5 each because I'm pretty sure we'd be able to get that for them. Now, the other hand saws we have here are tenon saws, and this is a particularly nice one. Now, tenon saws are much finer, and they were used to do dovetail joins and more delicate timber work on furniture making. This is an excellent unit that's very heavy and the back uh, sort of the the backbone i guess you'd call it on this one is actually brass so it's a very good quality one it's a henry diston and sons made in philadelphia usa a well-known brand of quality saws back in the day it's actually in pretty good condition there's a bit of a crack through the timber handle here so that's a bit of a shame and it's obviously well weathered. Oh, the handle has been cracked through there, so it's a chance that it's been re-glued. But it doesn't matter. I'm going to clean the timber up a little bit, probably, sorry, the steel, uh, probably with some fine steel wool. 
We'll get a little bit of a shine on the brass so that customers can see it's brass. I'm not going to polish it up completely. But even with the handle in rough condition, I would think that's probably still a $50 tenon saw. So that's a really nice one. The other one here has a steel back on it. Uh, I don't know if this is branded. It is. This is a Sheffield, an English one. Uh, the teeth feel fairly sharp on this as well. The handle's in better condition, but it's not the quality that the distance saw is. Probably around about $20, though, if we clean that one up. So they're pretty good. Uh, now, I did look in the Esky the other day, and I have a feeling there's a couple more tenon saws in there. We'll get to those later. So I might move the saws out of the road. We'll pack some boxes up here so we've got some room to work, and we'll tip out this box of plumbing fittings and see what scrap we've got and see what we can sell. Okay, we have enough room here now to upend the box. Hopefully not too much rolls off my bench. A typical plumbing supplies box. Now, we might get some stuff to sell, but I'd imagine most of it's going to be scrap metal. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just sort through it. Uh, I'll use the file just to see what's brass and see what isn't. I will pull out any taps that I think have a little bit more market than just for scrap brass. That's not a bad one. It would probably clean up quite well. Uh, whereas just general brass fittings, I'm not going to try and sell any of those. It's really only the taps I look for. That one's a little rough and it's well and truly blocked up with. In fact, I think it's got the remains of a, a metal, a steel fitting in there. So I'll just sort these out. And for those that haven't done much scrapping before, a file is your best friend. You can see the yellow of brass. And the other friend you should have, if you, indeed you've got some friends, is, is a magnet. Now that's a good one straight off. So I thought that may have been all brass, but we have a steel nut on there. The threaded part is brass, but the nut isn't. So we'll need to separate that if we want to get a good price for a brass. You could sell it as is, just as irony brass. But, you know, the difference is about $3 up to about $8. So it's worth taking that nut off. And rather than unscrew it, because it looks like the thread's got a bit of old sealant or something on there, or maybe even a little bit of concrete when it, where it went through an old... Uh, laundry trough or something uh, I would just probably just cut that straight across with the grinder and on the other side it'll fall in half quickest way to clean them up so I'll sort this pile into clean brass brass that needs a bit of work which includes brass with copper pipe because our copper is worth a lot more than brass is uh, that one will be all brass and I will be checking them with the magnet and with the file, if I'm a bit unsure. Now, oh, that's actually copper pipe. So it's probably worth separating that copper pipe from the brass fittings. So that's to be processed. That looks like a fairly new tap, but we're missed it, missing the top section like that. But that's a secondhand one. Rather than trying to make that up, that's just going straight in the scrap brass. There is a fiber washer on there, and I do like to have my brass samples as clean as possible. So I like to break the fiber washes off most scrap yards are fairly forgiving and they wouldn't worry too much about that but you know you give them a clean sample and they've got nothing to argue about now some of these taps will be brass the tap handles that one's just plastic so we're going to have a little bit of rubbish that one's plastic as well you can just feel the weight of it and these ones sometimes quite often say solid brass it's obviously chromed so chromed brass and nickel plated brass and even painted brass can go to the yard as it is. Uh, they used to take it all as one category at my yard, but I noticed in the recent price list I had, they've got a separate category for plated brass and, and painted brass as compared to clean brass. Uh, there's not a great deal of difference and I'm not going to have a second drum. I'll just put it all in as one and take the slightly lower price. It's uh, not enough to worry about in my view. So a bit more copper with a brass fitting. We're probably going to have to cut that off. And that's a brass control rod from a float valve, probably from a toilet system. So that should be all brass. Yep, that's brass. So I won't bore you with this. That's what I'm going to go through, and I'll come back to you with little piles in a minute. I've finished quickly sorting. We have a little bit of stuff just to work on to clean up. We have some gel fittings, which I'll just put in my heavy melt steel. A bit of rubbish and plasticky stuff. Um, I tend to save these little 
indicator things that come out of the tops of taps like this coal one here uh, purely because sometimes I get some nice taps that need them so I'll keep those ones they're all for the hot water these little bits of aluminium are out of the indicators from other types of taps so that's brass and the little piece I punched out is aluminium a little bit of copper this is a solid piece of copper it's actually the the tip from a large soldering iron so that will be nice copper and we have some olives here some new uh, compression olives that are copper these are just steel i've got a little tin for the uh, saddle so i'll put them in there those are just light pressing steel we got a bonus allen key and one tap top that actually isn't brass or copper and it's a uh, cast zinc or a die cast so that can go in with a cast alley all that brass now a couple of taps here that are complete uh, this one's pretty rough most of the planing's worn off it but it's kind of got a, a bit of a rustic appeal to it actually it works fine so will we sell that as a tap or will we sell it as brass let's do a quick check on its weight and it weighs just over half a kilo so brass was up to around eight dollars a kilo probably not quite that and given that this is the lower grade being a plate uh, chromed one so that's about four dollars not quite four dollars for scrap metal i think i'll get five easily for it in the shop we might even go ten and this other one much the same i think that's worth dropping in the electrolysis tank and just giving a clean up they clean up really quickly with that and i am going to do a video on the electrolysis tank very soon and i have some other brass taps to clean up and it value adds very easily we'll easily turn that into a ten dollar tap so they're better value than scrap brass we also found in the box a cast iron tool it's branded Robilt, and it's actually a bung remover now some of the plumbing fittings have this sort of bung with the male square and others particularly on elbows plumbing elbows sometimes they have an inverted bung which is like a female bung and this is what suits it so a little plumbing tool i had a quick look online there was a couple of people trying to sell it for 20 or 30 dollars i think that's dreaming a bit I'll probably just put five dollars in that in the shop but it's better than scrap metal so that's all we really have to do with that box other than i'll just finish cleaning this up and we'll weigh up all the parts at the end there may be some more brass fittings in some of the other boxes so i'll leave it till the end before i weigh up the scrap metal so let's get into these box of files now and see if we've got any value here i quite often get a lot of old files from people's sheds that i just put in the shop at a dollar each uh, but sometimes we get a lot better than that now this is a, a wiltshire rasp it feels very sharp it's got a nice handle on it it's going to be old enough to be uh, well it's actually australian made so it's going to be really good quality steel and if we get a wire brush we can clean them up quite easily just by a quick brush across the file and same with the metal files if you just go with the the actual lines on the file it generally cleans them up pretty good and it just makes them look a lot nicer getting all the debris out of there and they're obviously going to work better too i think this is just plaster or something in there i'm not sure it might be paint so some of them take a little bit i don't go to too much trouble that one's not going to clean up quite as well as i thought but it's still a very good rasp it's very sharp you can feel it on your fingers it will do a beautiful job on on woodwork now i'm not going to put that out for a dollar i reckon i'll get five dollars for that so i like to put the better ones out at five dollars um, this one's got a lot of paint in it too but i can feel that it's very sharp it actually grabs the skin so again we might just give out a bit of a brush clean up some of the paint uh, that's an english brand made in england it doesn't actually say a brand it's going to be very good quality steel we'll try that at five dollars with the handle as well some of the other ones yeah that feels pretty good as well a bit rusty on the back that may just go into the dollar box i don't waste too much time on them really it's it's more of a feel if i feel that they've got a lot of life in them i'll put them at five dollars or something because these sort of files are probably 30 odd dollars 20 to 30 dollars to buy new and i'm not talking your cheap um cheap ones online from timu or somewhere i'm talking about a quality brand and that one has got a brand there i can't quite read it but it'll probably be australian or english so that's not a bad one i'll probably just run the 
wire brush across the cutting lines of the file, it does bring it up a little bit nicer. We could probably try five for that. If they sit in the $5 box for a while, it's pretty easy just to transfer them down to the $1 box. That one feels a bit smooth. I don't think it's got a lot of bite left in it, so $1. And that one feels very sharp. Remembering that sometimes people buy a file for a job and they might only use it once and it ends up in the shed. It looks second hand, but it's still got a lot of life in it. That one, let's give it a quick clean on the brand. And that's a Wiltshire one again. So really good quality file. We'll clean these up a little bit. We'll try five for that one. This one looks a good one. It's a Wiltshire as well. It's got the um, large... So the chisel type lines on this side, it feels very sharp. That side feels great as well. Yeah, there's no issues with that. We'll get $5 for that one. The smaller ones, I generally put those in the dollar box. That's a, a round rat tail file. Yeah, it actually feels like that's been abused a bit. It's smooth in places and not all over. So perhaps just a dollar. Oh, here's a bonus. We have a saw set. I was talking earlier about setting the teeth on a, a wood saw. This is an Eclipse number 77 brass saw set, and it's designed to bend the teeth. So you'd go along and do one side, bend them all one way, and then go and do every second one on the other side. So being a brass one, we're probably going to get at least $10 for that. That's a nice little find. So I'll keep sorting the rest of these files, then we'll get into another box. I've got to the bottom of the file box. We found a few unusual things. Uh, the blade of an early um, bone-handled kitchen knife, and that's magnetic, so that's just going to go into the pressing steel. A drill bit that looks pretty good, so I'll put that with my drill bits. Uh, there was quite a lot of really nice files that feel pretty good. Uh, there's some. This one actually feels new. It's so grippy on the skin. It feels like it's super sharp. And I don't know if the guy that owned the contents of this shed used them as paint stirrers or not, but the file appears to have no wear at all in it. So I think that's a good one to clean up. Uh, I do need a few files around here, and that feels like an excellent file, even though it doesn't look much. But quite a lot of them have paint on them. And this one, this little rasp, has glue on the end. So I think they've been used as stirrers, which is a bit unusual. That still feels like a quite a good rasp as well. Uh, there was a welding rod that's just going to go in the scrap. And there's a sharpening stone, which I might just put in the $1 box at the shop. Uh, and there's some pretty average ones there. There were some really nice triangle files, and they all feel good. They're the sort you would have used to sharpen a handsaw. So I don't think they've ever been used much. So I'll actually keep a selection of those here because I don't have many good files. I might pick one or two out of here, and the rest can go to the shop. Oh, and I did find this one. And I don't know, it's a file, I don't know what it is. It looks like a rasp on one end, both sides, it's half round. And the other end looks like a more traditional file. And there is something written on it, I don't, I didn't read that. I think it was a brand or maybe made in England or Germany or something, I'll have to check that. But it's obviously a specialised file, and I haven't seen one like that before. I don't know what it's for, so leave some comments if you recognise it or if you know what it's used for. Clearly it's a specialised item, and I haven't come across one of those before. On to the next lot of stuff now. We have a light shade, and it's what they call cloud glass. It just looks like clouds in the glass. And it's an older one, this one, and you can tell that because the bottom section here has actually been ground, and it's quite rough. On any new shades, you'll find that that's just moulded and very smooth. So it's an older shade. It's not, or oh, it might even be, what they call cased glass. I think it is. It's actually got an outer layer and then the inner layer is more opaque. So it's an older shade. It doesn't mean it's worth a great deal. I'm probably going to put $10 on it in the shop. It would look nice on a, uh, a vintage bedside lamp or something like that. Could certainly be used as a ceiling shade. So being an older one and being that cloud glass, I think you'll be able to see that through the camera. Uh, I think we'll get $10 for that. Now, the couple of tins, this one feels empty, and it's a classic fox hunt scene. It's not an old tin. Uh, there's no labels on it. There's no marks on it. It's possibly an English tin. It certainly looks English, but it's, I'd say it's fairly modern, really nice and clean inside. 
So I'm just going to put $5 on that. It's a, a great cake or biscuit tin, and some people do collect the fox hunt scenes. So $5 on that one. This one is an older tin, and I'm pretty sure it's a willow. Sometimes these are hinged. I don't think this one is hinged. Willow being an Australian made, they made a lot of Australian uh, tinware, I guess you'd call it. Uh, this one, no, it's not hinged, but it is an older tin. I'd say it's probably 1960s. And we have, I think this was a mincer. It's quite heavy. Ah, uh, there we go. It is a willow tin made in Australia. Uh, a classic cake tin. Um, yeah, I think we'd get $20 for that. It's in really good condition. It's the tall ship's uh, image. The lid fits pretty well. Tall ship's all around the side. It clearly hasn't been in a shed for a long time, or at least it hasn't been wet because it's not rusty. And being an Australian-made willow tin, I reckon we'll get $20 for that. And I think this was a mincer. Let's have a look. Yes, it's a, an English Beatrice mincer. Let's see if it's all there. We have the, the turn screw that goes through from this end. And I think, no, other way around. Goes that way. That's better. So this end has the handle. It's on a triangle uh, locating shape. And I think that's, yeah, these are often missing. That's the, uh, the thumb screw that holds the handle on. And on this end, we should have a series of cutters. Yeah, there's three different sorts of cutters. A very coarse one, a finer one, and a really fine one. And they drop over the top, locate on a couple of driving tangs there. Sometimes they have a washer. Sometimes you could put one of these on back the front to put the wing nut on. And the clamp's complete. It clamps to a kitchen bench. And away you go. You can grind your sausage mince. So that's in good operational condition. Some people still use these for uh, grinding up mince or even fishing burley or something like that. Uh, I usually get around 20 to 30 on these. This one's in very good condition. It's quite clean. There's no rust. We do have the spare cutters. The wooden painted handle is still in very good condition. I think I'd go $30 on that in the shop. Uh, is it the original box? It looks like it is. Harper Beatrice, one only, Harper Food Chopper, made in England. So we'll leave it with the original box, and we can keep the spare cutter in there as well. And I reckon that's going to be $30 in the kitty, that one. The last box, and then we've got the Esky. This one has some large G-clamps and they're in pretty good condition. And I reckon I might keep these here. You can never have enough clamps. There's a couple of smaller ones, both in good condition. The threads look good. These are Dawn Australia, so they're quite good clamps. Um, I would imagine they're going to be $20 each if I wanted to sell those, at least. Uh, the Dawn stuff is quite sought after their quality, but I'm gonna keep those. I guess we should write down a value for them. Um, for the sake of getting a total of what this lot's worth. I'll check eBay, but I'm going to say $20 each on the Dawn clamps. Uh, this one, has it got a brand on it? It just says Lock, made in Australia. Lock brand, I haven't heard of that one. The thread is a bit worn. It's, actually, it's quite chippy on the thread. Uh, it's a bit sloppy. Still usable, but I don't think it's quite as good a quality as the other ones. But it's larger, so we'd probably still go, say, we'll say 10 on it, and that would make 50 for the three clamps, but I will be keeping them all here. Now, the rest of this box, we have a lot of hardware, kitchen latches, uh, drawer pulls. Uh, what do we got here? All sorts, some retro doorknobs. We have some, oh, here we go, some vintage kitchen cabinet style push button latches. So, even a wooden knob there. We have all sorts. These latches look brand new. Weldon. Melbourne, Victoria. Cabinet hardware. So, they're brand new. They're probably nearly worth eBaying those for the people that do up 
these kitchen cabinets, especially with the new ones. Hmm. I'll have to do a bit of checking on those. Oh, we have a latch here off an ice chest. So, real mixed bag in here, but there's quite a lot of these new uh, kitchen cupboard latches. And that one's a different sort. I don't know if it's new or it's just come out of its packet or not. I'm not sure. I'll sort all these out and uh, just see what value I've got here. So I'll be back with you shortly. Okay, apologies for sorting it out without you guys following along, but this video will go for way too long if I take you on all the little processes. Basically, I've tipped out the box and this is exactly what's in it. I haven't thrown anything in the bin. I haven't pulled anything out. I'll tell you what I'm going to do with it all. There's some little um, sliding door thingos here. Uh, vintage ones, they're probably, they could even be nickel plated brass. I'm going to ask $5 for the set of them. There was a drill bit with a broken tip that can just go in the scrap. A couple of dowels, some random hardware which will just go in my jars here. Uh, some of these locking latch things that you find on more modern equipment, they're both broken. They're just a die cast, so they can go with the cast alley. I think these brackets are aluminium. Where's my magnet? No, they're not. Okay, they can just go in the steel. Uh, so can most of the other stuff. Uh, that, st that will be a die cast alley again, so we can put those together. Uh, now, the latch, there was only one of these latches. There's the no keeper for it. I think I'll just put that in the $1 hardware box at the shop, as I will with that knob, that retro knob, and that nice old drawer handle. They can all just go in the $1 box. Uh, and there's a little bit of rubbish. I'm not sure what these plastic clips were off, but they're just rubbish. Oh, that handle will be a die cast aluminium or cast zinc again. Where's our pile there? Uh, which leaves us with a big pile of these little roller latches. They're very common. They're on a lot of vintage style cupboards and they're even handy still for, uh, we've got one on our back flywire door just so that it kind of doesn't blow in the breeze. It actually holds closed. Uh, I'm going to put them in a box at the shop for a dollar each. Now there's a fair few of them uh, and it's the sort of thing that will take a long time for them all to sell. These ones similar. Now I'm going to put five dollars each on these. They are new old stock. There's a couple that don't have the plastic bags with them. Uh, these plates go with them as well. I think that's the actual locking part that the latch goes through. There's a bit of hardware that goes with these because these ones all have their hardware in them. So I'm going to ask five dollars each for those and someone may make me an offer on the lot which I'll probably accept if it's a reasonable offer. There's two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven plus the ones out of packets so we feasibly could get $50 for that lot. If I put them on eBay, I'd probably even get that. I did a quick search and I found some of these on eBay and someone was trying to sell one pair for $25 plus postage. Uh, $5 each. We may sell one or two lots and then someone might make me a deal on the rest. Whatever. Um, I perhaps will be conservative and maybe write down $30 on all that. But I don't think I'll have any troubles getting that for them. Uh, the only other thing left out of this box was these handles, draw pull handles. I would probably just put $5 on the set of these, but I'm going to hang on to them because I have a cabinet out in the emergency storage shed that I think I need a few of these handles for. So I'll write them down at $5 as well, but again, they'll go into my keeping pile for now. So we're just about done. We'll just clean the bench off and get into that esky and just see what's in it. And the esky itself will be worth something as well. So we're running out of bench space and I've stacked stuff all around the place. So let's get this last thing done. Let's get into this Willow Esky. I think it's 1980s era, as I mentioned. It's actually in pretty good condition. And I think it's probably going to be a $20 Esky. And we have a few interesting bits in here. As I remembered, there's a couple more tenon saws. So let's have a look at those. The teeth on that one are very rusty and not in very good condition. It's just a steel back one. It's not a brass back. has got a brand on it. It's Henry Greaves Hermitage Hermitage Works Sheffield. So it's probably going to be a $10 tenon and saw. It's a smaller one than the others. The handle looks okay. But yeah, the teeth are very poor. So 
Yeah, I think we'll go 10 on that. I'll give it a bit of a clean up with the other ones. This one's even smaller again. The teeth look much better on this one. Yeah, they feel quite sharp. I think that would cut very nice. Uh, it's probably quite old. The shapes of the handles get more decorative as they get old. And uh, that's a, a half handle, I guess you'd call that. And that's a complete one. I really like that handle. It's got a, a big smattering of paint on it from lying around the workshop over the years. Hopefully they didn't use the saw for stirring the can of paint. There will be a brand on that as well, and I think I can read Henry Diston again. A bit hard, but I'll, yeah. yes it is, I can read that now in the light. So it's not a brass back, unfortunately, but we'll clean that one up. And I think being the older handle in good condition, and being a Diston, I think that's a $20 tenon saw really nice little one that one now what do we have in here we have a little um, tomahawk or probably more correctly called a hatchet it's a rocket it's got a nice rocket insignia on the grip looks very 1950s from that grip uh, maybe 60s perhaps what's it say on the blade here if we get the light in the right spot it's a cyclone rocket with a patent number it ends in 57, that could well be the year uh, that it was, well, if it was patented then, then perhaps it's 1960s uh, construction. That's a really nice little hatchet, that one. The blade looks in good condition. I'll do a bit of checking, but I'm thinking that's a 30 or $40 piece right there. It has been abused a little bit on the top. They get used as a wedge and get hammered, but that would clean up okay. Yeah, really nice little find, that one. Uh, we have some other tools in the bottom. Uh, this is a, I think this is what they call a Forstner bit or similar. It's, I think Forstner bits are for drilling uh, large holes with a flat bottom. This one can't actually be used for drilling a hole because the wings of the blades obviously are wider than the hole it drills. I suspect this one might be for shaving down a piece of timber to fit into the centre. And it looks to be about three quarters of an inch across. So maybe this is for shaving down the end of a dowel to be exactly three quarters of an inch. I'm not sure. Let me know if you know exactly what this is. It's a nice old tool. It obviously goes in a an old hand brace, but I'm not sure why there's a notch in the end there. Interesting piece. I might have to do a little bit of research on that one. Off the top of my head, I'm thinking... It might be worth $20. You don't see these things every day. And it basically has two plane-like blades that are, have adjustable depths on either side. Very interesting. Nice little find. Uh, we have a, a small hammer in here. Uh, is this a cobbler's hammer? It has got a brand on it. Uh, cobbler's hammer... Mm, panel bender's hammer, it's a bit small for that I'm thinking it would be more for shoes I'll clean that up and just see what it has written on the side but I reckon it's not the original handle it's just been made out of a piece of dowel but it looks alright I think that's probably still a $10 piece and, oh I don't know what this is maybe, I think that's probably a saw set, maybe for oh ok I'm not sure I think it is a saw set for bending teeth. It might be used on a circular saw blade. Bushman, it's branded. I'll see if I can check that out online. It's probably not going to be worth a great deal, maybe $5. Now, we have some interesting pincers here. We're probably getting a focus on that. They don't actually have a blade. So they may be more like a crimper. I'm not sure. They have a number on that side and a number on that side. Yeah, I think they're some sort of crimper. I don't really know. I'll do a bit of checking on that as well. It's a bit hard to put a price on it when I don't know what they are. Here we have some tin snips. Uh, pretty loose in the pivot. In fact, it looks like it's just about been broken, the pivot or the rivet. So... Mm, they might just go in the dollar box, you know. The blades don't look very good. I doubt you'd cut anything with it at the moment without doing a bit of work to them. So just in the dollar box there. 
Uh, we have a little adjustable wrench here. These are sometimes a king dick or something like that. I'll clean them up. It's a, got a, a very agricultural looking pivot pin there. It's just a large nail that's been butchered on either side so it can't fall out. Again, that may just go in the dollar box. We'll see if there's a brand on it. Uh, a little set square here. or They sometimes have a level in it. This one used to. But the spirit level bubble's been broken. The glass is gone. Uh, still a, quite an operational little square. Builder's square. We'd easily get five for that, even without the uh, the level in it. Yeah. Probably 10. I reckon I'd nearly go 10 because it's a little bit ornate. It's an older model and you could probably replace the the little spirit level bubble if you really wanted to. Uh, and some boxes. What have we got in here? Some hardware. There's a lock assembly. Oh, it looks like there's a couple of those. And what's in these boxes? Uh, oh yeah, these are window latches. So they're going to have some value as well. I'll probably sell these per box. Just to move them on. Is this the same? We have more window latches? Yeah. Oh, these are the other part of them. Oh, so, yeah, both halves are there. That's the part that swings around and that's the part it locks on or under. Okay. We'll see what those are worth. But that's the end of our investigations. I just better work out some prices. We're going to have a pretty big list and I think we'll have a pretty good total. Okay, we have stuff everywhere and I've been doing a bit of checking and researching and seeing what's in the boxes and everything. We've got 14 sets of these sash window latches and I had a look online and the cheapest I could find at any, at, on the big hardware chain store websites was just under $10 for one set. And uh, there are more expensive ones depending on whether they're chromed or powder coated or something. These ones are vintage, they're quite good quality and they're obviously brand new. I reckon we could get $5 per set. I think they would sell, um, over time, I think they would sell quite well. We have 14 sets, so that's going to add up to a fair bit. We have one odd one there. That's a Lockwood, some sort of different latch. I don't think it's going to match up with that one. So they might just both go in the dollar uh, tub. But we have 14 complete latches. I had a look at these door locks. They're a mortise lock. Uh, they're brand new. They're FCO. They're Australian made. They're clearly quite vintage. The packaging looks 1960s. And there's lots of options here. I think you could have a, a like a thumb lock on them, or you, maybe you could have one where you needed a screwdriver to lock it. I'm not totally sure. There's a few options. And you've got little stubby um, shafts that the knobs fit on. So, yeah, it's a complete set. I don't know who would use one. I would imagine they would have been pretty expensive in their time. So there's two sets with the instructions for marking holes in the door and that sort of stuff. I'm just going to put $10 each on those. I don't think they're going to be that easy to sell because we need to find someone that actually wants one. Whereas these sash window latches, well, lots of older houses have sash windows and these often get bent. So I think they'll sell quite well. Uh, what else did I discover? That is a... A saw set but it's actually for a thin bladed saw like a bow saw so the saw there's a depth stop there the blade goes down that side and the little lever comes across the top there so it's only i think five dollars it's actually swedish bushman made in sweden i think just five dollars on that this little wrench uh, was actually an english brand and it was a footprint brand I'm not going to worry about putting a nicer bolt through it where I could probably get $5. We'll just put that in the $1 box. Someone will grab that quick smart, I'm sure. Uh, I did polish up this little hammer. It's an English one. I think it is a cobbler's hammer. And it was Wynn and Timmins. So uh, quite a nice old vintage cobbler's hammer. I did put a little wedge in the top so it was nice and firm on the handle. I reckon we'll go 15 on that because it's nicely branded. So... I better start writing a list and sorting all this stuff out. There's, it's all over the place. I've got boxes and I've got to go and clean up those saws yet. And then we'll present you with the list and we'll have to weigh up the scrap metal as well. And uh, so now's the time to have a bit of a guess at what you think it's all going to price out at. I will price everything, even though I'm going to be keeping some things as I've discussed. And I thought those ones, there's 10 of those. I reckon we'd get a dollar each. So I reckon we'd get $10 for those. But as I said, they're keepers. 
I'm probably going to nominate 20 bucks for all those triangle and square files. They're the ones I'm going to keep as well. So there is a fair bit of value here. Be back with you shortly once I clean the saws up. And didn't they come up well? All I did was some uh, steel wool, soapy water, give them a little bit of a buff up and clean the timber handles are back to get rid of most of the paint splatters and then just a coat of beeswax. So they've all come out really nicely. They're, they're perfectly usable except for the fact that some of them, the teeth aren't very good and they would need sharpening. But they're um, really nice examples of the old tenon saws. The handles come up fantastic. The beeswax leaves a nice finish. And I like that the steel is not totally polished or anything. Uh, it's just as you would expect an old saw to look that's been well cared for. Uh, and this one, the nice brass back one, even has the distant, it's a bit faint, but you can see the distant stencil on the actual blade. So really nice, those ones. Okay, we have everything out of this um, lot, all on the bench. Uh, the bench is fairly well packed full, and we've worked it all out. We've weighed the scrap. We had uh, about nine kilos of brass. So that's pretty cool. Uh, three taps. There was another tap after I showed you the two earlier, and I will clean all those up. Well, at least that one's probably right to go. I will do those two in the electrolysis tank at some stage. Really easy process, and they will value add. So there we go. Let's look at the notepad. How did you go with your guesses? Well, I did make a few adjustments to the prices, uh, but nothing outstanding. I'll try and quickly scroll through them did raise the price of a couple of the tendon saws because they did clean up really well, I think. Um, scanning through here. Now the files, I worked on about $20 for all the small ones that I was keeping, and they're still over here. And I'm gonna keep this one too. I did a bit of checking. I think it's just a particularly shaped file and rasp for intricate timber work. I don't think it's anything special other than that. It does have a brand on it. I think it said, I can't remember what it said. A bit hard to read without my glasses on. So it's uh, it's going to be handy to keep all the small ones. That other one I'm going to keep and clean up. And the rest of them, well, I did cull them a little bit uh, to make the $5 ones a, a few less, but I think I'll do $2 a pick on the other ones. Anyway, I've just kind of worked that down to $20 worth of the ones I'm keeping. The other ones I think worked out to about 40 but I said, let's say 20 so 40 all up. I'd like to be conservative with my prices. Uh, and everything else here, as mentioned roughly, the G-clamps, the Dawn G-clamps, uh, get, actually get better prices than what I thought. So I've worked on $30 each for the Dawn ones and $10 for the other one. Uh, the roller latches, there were 48 of them. Now I'm going to ask a dollar each, and I think over time I will get that, but let's say half that even less than half that, let's say $20 to be conservative. The kitchen cupboard latches, I reckon I'll get my $5 each there. The door handles, they were the, oh, the ones I'm going to keep, and that's what I've marked with asterisks, the couple of items that I'm going to keep. I went a dollar each, $10 value there. The hatchet, um, I did find one online for $75 it hadn't sold, so I know they're not rare, but I still think that's an achievable price. Look at that, $500 and we haven't finished. So our total, because your eyes are probably scanned straight to the bottom, just over $700 worth of stuff. Who would have thought? Dave, I hope you're holding onto your steering wheel with both hands when you hear that. Uh, the Dow Shaver, I think that's what it is. I didn't find one online. I'm going to stick with my $20 there. Uh, Cobbler's Hammer, I did up the price a little bit. I didn't find out anything else about those crimpers. I think they're crimpers. But let me know in the comments if you know what they're for. Uh, but they have got a flat, they're not like, hang on, let's get a focus, they're not like side cutters, they have got a flat piece at the end with a hole in it. So some sort of specialised crimpers, I put $10 on those. Uh, and the window latches, there was 14 of them, I'm going to try for $5 each with just 70 but I just thought, let's say 50 uh, The scrap metal, there wasn't much uh, steel, only about a kilo of heavy steel, I didn't even include that. I didn't weigh up the aluminium or the light pressing steel either, but $70 worth of brass. So some good scrap there, over $700, $700 fairly conservatively um, out of some boxes of a shed that was just being cleaned up. And I don't know what would have happened if I had said to Dave that I didn't want them. Maybe they would have gone in a scrap bin, not sure. I don't think he would have taken them back to Brisbane. I'm glad he called in. Thanks, Dave. Fantastic. 
And this is all I'm throwing out, just some plastic handles from TAPS. Uh, look, I could possibly put them in a free box. Every now and again someone's looking for one of these handles, but they're, they're very dated. I don't think I'm going to take up space in the shop trying to give them away. And just some little plastic bits and broken washers and various other things. So hardly any landfill from this lot either. Also a few things here to go in the dollar box that I didn't allow for. So we're going to make some people fairly happy with some of this stuff. And hopefully some collectors will like some of the other things. I will certainly like the few things I'm keeping like the G-clamps. And the scrap metal will go into my bins. So a bit of a bonus for me. Plenty of income from the shop. And uh, yeah, as we try and rehome it all. So I've got through it. It was a long video this time, but I wanted to go through it all fairly thoroughly and show you guys, you know, what to do with fairly typical stuff that comes out of a shed, whether it's a deceased estate or, you know, boxes that you find at a garage sale. There's a lot of good value in amongst shed stuff. And I like to try and rehome it. Very little going to landfill. So that's good. Uh, thanks heaps, Dave. I really appreciate the uh, donation and I hope you can do something with that radio I don't think it's worth $700, but I did put a bit of work into cleaning this up. So, um, but then again, if you fix the radio, you're going to put a lot of work into that, probably a lot more than I ever would. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've all enjoyed this. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.